Hey guys, and welcome back to a new video and a new playlist on my channel because I decided to finally make a whole dedicated playlist on Kotlin multi-platform and Compose multi-platform because those two technologies are more and more becoming a viable option in the cross-platform space. And in this playlist, I will really start from the absolute basics. So no matter if you've never worked with Kotlin multi-platform before, no matter if you don't even know what that is at this point, or if you already got your hands dirty on it, this playlist will be structured so that everybody can learn something. And this video, I first First of all, I want to talk about what Kotlin multi-platform actually is, what Compose multi-platform is, how both these technologies work under the hood. So I will explain all the magic behind the scenes. And at the end of the video, I will talk about some limitations the technology itself has. So what is Kotlin multi-platform or KMP as an abbreviation? Normally when we build software, then each specific platform we develop for, so desktop, mobile, web, all those platforms have their very own native way of building software for it. And that just leads to Windows applications not running on macOS, that leads to iOS apps not running on Android, and Android apps not running in your browser. Yet very often, we're working on the same application for multiple platforms. So especially when you're building a mobile app, then it should be a no-brainer to bring out the same apps for both iOS and Android. However, normally that would require us to build two separate apps, even though the actual behavior of the app is very similar. So if we have desktop, we might have iOS as a platform, we might have Android, and we might have web. That if we build the same application that should run on all those platforms, then there will always be a common part. I am drawing very ugly, then there is actually a common part between those platforms. And in reality, the common part is much bigger than I can illustrate here. So why isn't there a way that lets us share this common logic, so the logic that is the same between all those platforms, and let us only write that logic multiple times that actually differs per platform? And there is. It's called Kotlin Multiplatform. Surprise, surprise. So Kotlin Multiplatform or KMP is just a very trending technology by JetBrains. So by the same guys who are behind your favorite IDEs, so Android Studio, IntelliJ, and so on. And KMP allows us to do exactly that. It allows us to share the common logic between all those different platforms I have on the screen here by just specifying that only once in Kotlin. And that not only has the advantage that you need to write much, much less code. You need to write a shared code but only once instead of four times in this example. But it also has the advantage that you only need to test your shared code once. So you need one single test case and it will cover possibly four platforms. So that's really what Kotlin multi-platform is. It really allows us to share Kotlin code between different targets, so between different platforms. But what is now Compose multi-platform? Because that's also a common buzzword you hear in combination with Kotlin multi-platform. And you can see Compose multi-platform as kind of an add-on to Kotlin multi-platform that also lets us share UI code. So Compose itself or Jetpack Compose itself is really just Android's modern way of building UIs by just describing how the UI looks like on Kotlin. And originally that was only available for Android. But nowadays, we also have the option to use Jetpack Compose for Kotlin multi-platform. And that means if our app shares the same UI components across platform, so if we have the same type of button on web that we have on Android, that we have on iOS, that we have on desktop, then we just need to define that button, that maybe specialized style button in our own kind of branding and theming. We only need to define that once in our shared Kotlin code, and we can still use it on every single platform. As of now, Compose multi-platform is still in beta for iOS, so it's not officially stable yet. Yet, and I think it's also in alpha for web applications, but technically it already supports all these platforms here. Because I definitely see the future of Kotlin multi-platform use Compose multi-platform as well, I will definitely also use Compose multi-platform in this playlist here. So let's talk about how KMP actually works under the hood. What is really the magic behind this tool that allows us to share Kotlin code for so many different platforms that actually don't even use Kotlin natively? So generally, when we have a KMP project, then we have to specify so-called targets. Target is nothing else than a platform we want our app to run on. So to keep things simple, let's assume we have an iOS target and we have an Android target. If you get deeper into Kotlin multi-platform, you will also notice that specific targets also represent specific types of CPU architectures because the CPU architecture has a lot of impact on what kind of code and what kind of binaries it can understand. But on a higher level, we can just say, okay, we have Android and iOS in this little example, but this could also be extended with desktop, so with macOS, Windows, Linux, and of course, web. And when we have those targets here, then every single target has its own kind of Let's call it preferred way of reading code or preferred way of understanding code. So Android, for example, runs on the JVM. 
the Java virtual machine so that mails it wants Java bytecode from us, which it will then feed into the Java virtual machine and that one will further process the Java bytecode. However, on iOS, we don't have such a thing like the JVM that's not compatible with iOS. iOS actually works with native binaries. Native binaries are in the end just files with a bunch of zeros and ones which are pre-compiled. It does not work with the JVM, it just has its own kind of CPU architecture, which has its own format these CPU instructions have to be in. And if we now have our shared Kotlin code, which is really just one piece of code, and we still want that to run on specific multiple different targets on Android and on iOS, the Kotlin compiler in this case has to somehow figure out how to compile that Kotlin code into code that natively runs on Android and on iOS. So if we would then try to actually create an executable app out of our KMP project, then what the compiler will do is it will take a look, okay, here, I actually want to build that Kotlin multi-platform project for an Android target. Oh, Android actually supports the JVM. So it will take our shared Kotlin code and compile that to Java bytecode. And that is something that runs very well on Android. That is also what normal native Android apps compile to. So no problem there. But when the compiler will then notice, okay, actually, our developers also want our app to run on iOS, which does not work with the JVM, but with native binaries, then the Kotlin compiler will actually take a look at the Kotlin code and compile that into those specific native binaries iOS wants to understand. Here, we compile that to native binaries. You know why that is so cool? This way of compiling a Kotlin multi-platform project means that our app is still running natively on every single platform we make it run on. So that means that from our KMP code, from the shared Kotlin code, we can still call the native APIs directly from Android and from iOS. So a native API could, for example, be, hey, we want to show a notification on our device. That is something that, of course, works quite differently on iOS than on Android because these are just different operating systems and Apple has different ideas how so showing notification works on iOS, then Google has about Android. But both Google and Apple actually provide their own kinds of API, their own kinds of sets of functionality that let us developers show a notification in our code. And with KMP, we can use those specific APIs directly that Apple or Google provide. With other cross-platform technologies like Flutter, for example, that's not possible. While Flutter also compiles to native code, which runs natively on each platform, with Flutter, there is actually a bridge layer necessary. So some kind of layer in between, which interprets the code from Flutter and translates that into something specific platform needs to understand. So from Flutter, we can't call these system APIs directly in our Flutter code like it's possible with Kotlin multi-platform. And by just saving this step in a KMP project and directly compiling to native code, we of course have more performant apps after all. And this is really unique to Kotlin multi-platform because there is no other cross-platform framework that allows us to actually call these native system APIs directly in the cross-platform framework itself. So I hope that gave you a good understanding of how these technologies actually work under the hood. The last thing I now want to talk about are some limitations of Kotlin multi-platform. And that is that you can only use Kotlin libraries inside of a Kotlin multi-platform project. So while on Android, we can use libraries that were written in Kotlin, we can use libraries that were written in Java because those two, Java and Kotlin, are interoperable. So in the end, they compile to the same JVM bytecode that Android understands. But using Java libraries in the Kotlin multi-platform shared code is not possible. While that would still work for our Android target, for our Android platform, it wouldn't for iOS, for example, because iOS doesn't have a thing like the JVM. And Java libraries just very often depend on specific behavior or functionality from the JVM. And also the build system behind KMP is usually Gradle. So also what we use for Android so just the thing that really packages together a working app that controls all those little tasks like compiling our app, packaging it together to an executable file and so on. And in order for a library to properly support Kotlin multi-platform, it just also needs to include the correct configuration for every single platform it should run on. And this by default, Java libraries just don't do. So what that also means is if you might be working on a pure native Android app at the moment, and you maybe plan to also make that work for iOS or potentially more platforms in future, then it's very smart to also already start pure Kotlin libraries from now on, because then the migration will be very easy later on. And one last limitation of Kotlin multi-platform, but that's actually a limitation of Kotlin multi-platform, but rather of Apple. If you want to build iOS apps or macOS apps with Kotlin multi-platform, you need actually a Mac, because those types of applications simply only run on a Mac. If you don't have a Mac, you can still use Kotlin multi-platform, you can still use Compose multi-platform, make that work for Android, make that work for desktop, and also make that work for iOS, but you won't be able to run that iOS app.
But other than that, I think it's a very, very exciting technology. I see a very bright future in Kotlin multi-platform, especially in Compose multi-platform. And I think we will have a lot of fun here in this playlist. If you actually want to learn how you can build a full app in Kotlin multi-platform, then check the link down below because I already have a full course about it. And other than that, thanks so much for watching. I will see you back in the next video. Have an amazing rest of your week. Bye-bye.